Hey everyone and welcome to another episode of Board Games Hitting My Table. Uh, this is talking about all the non-new to me games that I played during the first half of June 2022. Uh, before I get started on what I've been playing, and it's not a tremendous amount, so only got a few games here to talk about, um, but I need to give a shout out to the show's sponsor, Kienda. Dot co uk who are my go-to online retailer in the UK. And if you use my discount code in the show notes, you can get 5% off your first order. But let's get started on what I've been playing with Bastille. So we kind of had a spare of the moment decision to get a three-player game of this one played. We were just struggling over of what to decide to play. And we managed to pull this one off the shelf because it's a relatively simple, straightforward worker placement game, but it does have some pretty cool mechanisms, um, pretty much shared with Lancaster, if you're familiar with that game, where your workers actually have levels to them and you can spend a whole turn to kind of upgrade them to the next level, which will allow you to trump your opponent to get priority in like drafting new cards for set collection bonuses or gaining more money. Climbing this track here to collect these weapons to equip to your cars that you've collected. Um, I think the game works remarkably smoothly. It's really quick. You can get this played in about 45 minutes. Um, and there's some pretty interesting decisions. Um, I will say that luck does play quite a significant factor in this game. Um, not only because some of the objective cards you have um, merge with the cards that come out. And if those cards don't come out or if they've already been discarded, then you you know you're pretty much out of luck. Additionally, it has this you know, relatively interesting bag building system where you can spend a worker placement action to chuck, chuck these cubes in the bag. And when it gets to the halfway point into the end stage of the game, you're drawing these cubes out at random and then you can claim these different rewards um, in the order they come out. Now, I like that in theory, but it does play quite a pivotal part on who's going to win or who's not going to win the game, um, as it did with ours. Um, I think there was like a one or, points, one or two points difference in it. And, you know, if another cube was drawn, then it would have been the other way around. So, you know, you do have to bear in mind that luck is probably going to determine who the winner is here. But it's still a nice experience. Um, that did kind of tarnish the experience a little bit for me. But, you know, for, if you want a pretty straightforward worker placement game, this is not a bad one to, um, you know, to take a look at. That is Bastille. I've um, also played some more Splitter. Um, so I played the slightly more advanced map, and this is just such a blast of a game. Um, I've had a lot of people ask me where you can get a copy of this one. It seems to be quite hard to get hold of, but I'm sure it will get wider, um, you know, get a wider distribution soon. But this is a game where you're basically rolling a, um, a pair of dice and they're using those dice to write numbers on these different spots. But whenever you write one number, let's say I wrote the three here, um, I have to write the opposite number, as in the six, on the mirrored image of that. And you're basically trying to collect or make these clusters of these different numbers, but it becomes tighter and tighter and more restrictive as you go on. And it's just a great throwback roll and write, which I highly recommend. And I've not really, you know, not even slightly dampened uh, my enthusiasm on. So yeah, more enjoyment from Splitter. And if you can pick that one up, it only costs about eight pound or so. I really recommend you, um, you seize that opportunity and do it. And the same pretty much applies to my next game that I've been playing, which is more Rustling Leaves. So I've actually managed to play all the different maps on, um, on Rustling Leaves, Leaves now. So basically you have a, a different sheet relating to all the different seasons and all these, they all work in slightly different ways, which is not too confusing. You can just have a look at the sheet and you can see how everything scores. But again, you're basically rolling a pair of dice, but that is going to show the grid size or the, the square size you're going to use to encapture all these different symbols. And then you're going to tick something off within that box you've just drawn and score points accordingly. Really fast. I like the variety um, and it's just gone down well every single time. You know, is it going to hold up forever? I'm not sure. It might do. But, you know, right now I'm having a blast with rusting leaves and it's just you know, another very affordable but good experience. So that is uh, rusting leaves still going strong uh, for me. And that came quite highly on last month's uh, rankings. Also, finally managed to get a game of Isle of Sky back to the table. So this has been like right at the top of my to playlist for a while, but for some reason it keeps getting pushed back. But we managed to um, play a three player game of Isle of Sky and I had a lot of fun with it. I had a terrible game in terms of victory points. Uh, I, I trailed by quite a, quite a distance. But I still do like how smooth this little tile placement um, game works. Um, I love this um, this bidding system as you, you, know, you put these um, tiles behind your 
or in fact, you put them in front of your um, of your pair of shield, but you will assign money to them and you'll discard one of them. But if nobody ends up matching the money you've assigned to them, then you have to pay that money yourself and add it to your little aisle. Very simple um, mechanically, and I forgot how quick this game is. I think it's only like five or six rounds, and that goes past, you know, rapidly. Um, and yeah, believe it or not, I've been playing this game wrong for a, a long, long time. I've had this game for years in my collection and um, I managed to play it with somebody who's got the game themselves and they corrected me on, you know, when you get these tiles, you don't actually put them behind your screen, you put them in front of your screen so you know how much money to keep back and buy other people's tiles for, which makes perfect sense. And I can't believe um, that rule just bypassed me, but still really think this game is great and it's a nice kind of step up. From your traditional carcassons, etc., but not too much of a step up. But I think the, you know, the uh, reward does ramp up quite a lot. That is Isle of Sky by Alexander Pfister. Um, also, we played two games of Caesar. So I actually played this one with my mum um, for the first time, and had an absolute blast with it. So I was really impressed with this when I played it um, with my brother the first time. I, I thought it was just fantastically streamlined, simple two-player area majority game. And when I, uh, when I played it with my mum now, and she was really impressed with it to the point where she wanted to play it back to back, which is always a good sign. So yeah, I think this game is great. I think it's a bigger, um, it's a better game than the original Blitzkrieg. And I can definitely see this game being a bit of an evergreen I must admit, I did have two very successful games where um, I managed to string a bunch of regions together and get all those bonus tokens down and really utilize the power of those um, of those abilities that you collect. But still, I just love how tense this game is. But it's tense in a fun way. It doesn't feel terribly confrontational despite being pretty cutthroat. Love this one. This is Caesar by Paolo Mori. I also played a couple of Freedman Freeze games, the first one being um, Free Ride or, or Free Fart, you can see here from the uh, German version. This is a simple train kind of network building game, uh, a pick up and deliver style uh, mechanism going on as you're visiting all these different um, cities and trying to fulfill these contracts. But I do like this simple train laying system when you're building track, you put it as your own. Your tracks are free for you to travel down, but they end up costing money for your opponents to use, but then they become public. Money in this game is worth a lot of victory points. Now, I did only play this with two players, which I definitely think is a suboptimal way to play the game. It's a bit too open. I, I don't think we even used each other's track once, which you know I think was a bit of a, you know, again, a suboptimal way to play the game. But I still think the system itself is really good. I like the efficiency puzzle of needing to go here and on the way I'll collect this ticket to go there and you're kicking all those short, most efficient routes. Now, I do feel like the game goes on a little bit too long. and I've started to house rule taking some cards out of the deck. It might throw the balance off a little bit, but I'm kind of willing to sacrifice that to make the game play a little bit faster. But I still like this one. That is a Free Ride by Freedom and Freeze. I uh, also played from Freedom and Freeze uh, Fast Sloths. So we played a three-player game of this another pick up and deliver game but I like the uh, I like the idea of this one as your player piece basically cannot move and you have to kind of utilize the help of all these different animals and critters scattered around the map to move you around the board to collect these different um, I think it's these leaves from these trees all the animals work in different ways. Um, some throw you, some can move really quickly through certain types of terrain. Like you've got the dolphins that can absolutely blitz up these um, river paths, um, but they, of course they can't go on land. And you're all sharing these common animals. So someone might, might want the dolphin and pull it over here, but you need it over here. So there's that, that kind of back and forth struggle there. A, a nice game, again, it only takes about 45 minutes to play. And um, it's just something a little bit different, and I, I still like it. I'm, I'm not in love with it, but I would, I um, mean, you know, it's a, it's a soft recommendation from me. That is uh, Fast Sloths. Um, also, a couple of games that I don't have in my own personal collection that I've played. Um, we played a, another game of Welcome 2, um, and I only played this one semi recently, but I just completely forgot how the game worked. Um, and when it was taught to me again, I just instantly enjoyed it again. I think this is a very nice roll and write game. Sorry for the uh, saturation of roll and write games, but um, I tend to be playing a lot of them at the moment. Uh, this one, yeah, really like this one. Lots of different ways to um, score points, lots of different things you can dig into. And it's a lot of fun. You know, it's pretty clever, but it's not too um, overwhelming. So yeah, like that one. Um, and I also played a game of Orléon uh, with the Trade and Intrigue expansion, or at least some of it. Um, and you might notice here, this is no longer in my collection. Um, and that is nothing, nothing bad. I still really enjoy this game. We had a really solid um, four player experience. 
And, you know, a spoiler alert for a future um, you know, for episode of board games I got rid of. I just think I'm at a point now where I'm happy not to have a copy and I'll just play my friend's copy when he brings it out. Um, I still, again, I still think the game is great. I love this bag building system, but I tend to always do the same thing. And I also think you can get a little bit too much done. But still, this game I've had a great time with over the years. Um, it's had my Elite Shield for many, many years and it's just slightly fallen for me. But I still like it a lot and I'll play it any time at all. So that's it. Those are the games I've been playing the first half of June. Um, so not too many this time. So, you know, it's a bit of a shorter video, but still, I hope it's been um, enjoyable to watch. Um, as always, um, be sure to hit like and subscribe to the, the channel and uh, check out my other content too. And um, also be sure to check out kienda.co.uk. And if you want to, you can support my Patreon channel at patreon.com forward slash chairman of the board. But for everybody else, I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.